Okay guys, in this video we're looking at the unit circle now. Uh, so we're going to apply our understanding of trigonometry to this scenario. Uh, so we have a circle and we're going to divide that into four quadrants. Um, and we, are no we know that this is quadrant one. Uh, let's just go quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. Okay. Uh, so here's our x values and here's our y values. Um, now, the whole idea of a unit circle <clears throat> is that the radius all around the circle from the origin is 1. Okay, so the value from the center to the edge is always 1, no matter where you go. All right, so now what I want to look at is... Uh, the horizontal values and the vertical values if we were to work out the coordinates of um, yeah this say P as in the point of around the circle now I just want to um, show you using your understanding of uh, trigonometry um, we've got the hypotenuse here we have so we've got the hypotenuse here, um, provided that this is theta, this angle over there. And then this would be the adjacent, and this would be the opposite. Okay, so if we were to work out what the length of the opposite is, based on whatever theta is, you would be going sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is 1. Okay, and so whatever theta is, you're going to put it there. Because we're working with the opposite in the hypotenuse, we're looking at sine. Okay, opposite over the hypotenuse, which is 1. And we can uh, rearrange it that the opposite, the length of the opposite, is basically sine theta times 1. Anything times 1 is just itself. Okay, so the length of this is going to be sine of theta. Okay, it's all relative to the angle here. So then what we could do is the same as looking at A. A is uh, A, um, or the adjacent is A. We've got H being the hypotenuse, so we need cosine. So cosine of theta is equal to whatever the adjacent is divided by 1 which is the hypotenuse same uh, same reason and the same outcome uh, a is going to be cosine of theta times 1 which is going to be cosine of theta so we can say that a is cosine of theta okay that length going from origin to this point here now Knowing that we have a unit circle, okay, and this we are thinking of the coordinates around the circle, okay, then we can conclude that the coordinates of P, P is equal to, so coordinates is going to be X and then Y, your X value is going to be this distance, cosine of theta, and your vertical distance is going to be sine of theta, okay? So there's your coordinates of P around the unit circle, all dependent on what theta is. So you could have theta going, becoming bigger, becoming an obtuse angle. By the way, just uh, will probably be worth noting that we're starting at zero here, zero degrees. We're looking at 90 degrees up here. We're looking at, uh, we're looking at 180 degrees here, and we're looking at 270 degrees here. Okay, so thinking of a straight line pointing out this direction and going anti-clockwise, going around, making a revolution back to where X is. So relative to X, there's the angle, so a flat, a flat line, obviously theta would be zero. And then as it goes up, the angle increases, goes around, 
and once it hits um, going say west we're looking at 180 degrees because it's moved around 180 degrees okay moves into reflex angle through quadrant three and then back around revolution all right so we've just established that wherever the point is around the unit circle you can work out the coordinates by substituting whatever cosine theta is and sine theta you'll get that value okay to get the vertical distance is sine theta which is that part so your rise or your y value and then your horizontal distance which is your run or your x value is cosine theta so what i want to do here as theta increases okay as we travel um Anywhere in quadrant one, we can state that the values, and this is, I guess, using your logic about quadrants and the Cartesian plane um, and coordinates as well, that anything in quadrant one, your coordinates of X and Y are going to be both positive. Okay, so let's, uh, let's write this down on the side. So uh, points on the unit circle. So in quadrant one, uh, cosine of theta is going to be positive and sine of theta is going to be positive. Okay. In quadrant two, so anything in this quadrant here, you can see that our vertical uh, rise is still positive but because we're on the left hand side of the Cartesian plane uh, the run or our cosine of theta is going to be negative okay so cosine of theta is going to be negative but sine of theta is going to remain a positive value if uh, so this is when I guess theta is I'll put in brackets Theta is acute, okay, and then in this second one is when theta is obtuse, all right. Now, in quadrant three, we have a reflex angle, and the reflex angle being anywhere between 180 and 270 degrees. So cosine, your vertical, oh sorry, horizontal, cosine of theta is a negative value, um, but then our sine of theta is now also negative because they're both in the negative spectrum of the Cartesian plane. All right. Um, now, so I'm going to put theta is reflex between... 180 and 270 degrees. So now the last quadrant we've got cosine of theta being positive, okay, and sine of theta remains negative, okay. Theta again is still a reflex angle, but obviously it's going to be. Uh, towards or between 270 degrees and 360 degrees. So we worked out the sine of theta and the cosine of theta. So then what would be the tan of theta? And what we understand is that if we have a right angle triangle again, um, hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent, that the tan of theta is always the opposite over the adjacent through just basic trig. And uh, we already know from here that the opposite is the same as sine of theta. And we also know that the adjacent is the same as cosine of theta. So what we could say is that the tan of theta is sine of theta over cosine of theta. What does that work out? It works out the ratio of uh, those two values. Um, if we were to go back to um, straight line graphs, okay, where would you see this? Well, you could say that uh, the gradient is rise over run, which is your y distance, your vertical distance, divided by your horizontal distance. 
Okay, so sine of theta is your rise, cosine of theta is your run, so the gradient is identifying the ratio of those two values. All right, so when we think of this in the unit circle, uh, we're looking at, well, tan, the tan of theta in quadrant one, so quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, in quadrant four, we know that tan of theta is going to be positive, okay? Uh, we can kind of see that, yeah, well, a positive, a positive divided by positive is going to be positive. And then in quadrant two, that we've got a, we can kind of picture a negative slope, which will help support our um, understanding that a positive sine theta divided by a negative cosine of theta, positive divided by negative is a negative. So the trig ratio of that is going to be negative for tan of theta. Then when we look in quadrant three, both cos and sine are both negative. So negative divided by negative is going to be positive. So that means tan of theta in quadrant three is going to be a positive. And then lastly, when we look at quadrant four, a uh, ratio of sine and cosine in quadrant four, so tan of theta is going to be a negative because cosine is positive, uh, sine is negative, negative divided by positive is a negative. Okay, so hopefully that helps you. There's a lot of information there and we're going to move on to um, I guess another section where we'll kind of run through a few questions uh, where we apply uh, these rules and understandings. Okay, see you.